Uh, right. You know what's in my head right now? Mm. Two steps forward and two steps. I'm like, that's what I'm thinking about all morning. The song is 25 years old, I but know. it's still a hit. Uh, that's Paul Abdul. Uh, that album, Paul Abdul's debut album, every song on that album was a hit. Paul Abdul, some people don't remember the album. They, of course, do remember American Idol when she was a judge. Oh, she was fantastic on that show. I thought it was a lot of fun, and I, I actually liked how she got along with uh, Simon. Apparently, there was some tension there, but I thought she was really, really good. That was part of their shtick, I think. But before she was a, a judge on American Idol, she was a dancer and choreographer. I mean, she worked with Michael Jackson. She can dance. Next stop on in, in her career, America's got... No, I'm sorry. So You Think You Can Dance. So You Think You Can Dance. With Nigel Lithgow, who we love, and Jason Derulo is going to be a judge on on the show as well. It premieres tonight at 8 o'clock right here on Channel 5. Paul Abdul dropped by recently to talk about it. It's exciting. <laughs> it's exciting for me. I, I love the show. I love the whole, oh, the spirit and psyche of these amazing dancers. It's, dancers are unlike any other talent, so it's just the most cool thing. Well, to that's how you of. started out. I did. I'm very fortunate to have had an amazing career as a choreographer. So I kind of, uh, I, I come from a perspective of Having worked with artists, like prolific artists, uh, to young ones that are taking flight, and I just, I love working with dancers. They're unlike any anyone else because they do it because they have to. It's like air that they breathe. They know they're not making, you know, a great deal of money, and the wear and tear on their bodies is like any professional athlete, football players, and the kind of hours that they put in is like like what doctors and and lawyers put in. Right, you gotta learn the routine. Yeah, there are only really a handful of superstar famous dancers in the world. There are plenty of singers out there, but dancers, it's different. Baryshnikov, you, uh, you know. <laughs> it's like, crazy, it's, right? it's yeah. been, but what's wonderful about this show, which, you know, when I, there were no shows like this when I was coming up, so for the, this a show like this, very similar to my experience with American Idol. This show legitimately spawns major careers as dancers. You know, these dancers go on to perform behind the biggest acts in the world um, and are in major films and TV shows, but some go on to become Emmy Award winning choreographers. And that's what's so exciting about this show. It's very, the people who watch the show are so passionate about these athletes. Uh, you know, I know this is a perfect fit for you, but when I see you, I think American Idol. I'm sorry, you started it, you put it on the map, <laughs> and I really thought they should have brought you back for the last season. Well, Did you think about that? You know, I, I, I woke up, you know, a week and a half ago, just, I was here in New York, and I woke up like everyone else, and my Twitter feed was going crazy, saying, are you going to be coming back? Are you going to be coming back next season? What is everyone talking about? And then I was reading further. I'm like, oh my God, they just announced that. And I, it, it was like, I knew it would eventually come, but I, I was a little shocked. And then I started feeling melancholy because, I mean, that changed the, not only the trajectory of everyone's lives, but mine and mine too. Well, when I saw you on American Idol, I kept thinking about your, I think it was your debut album. Every song on the album was like a major hit. I mean, oh, like it, it, it was it was wild. It was a wild time. I mean, that that I've reinvented myself in so different careers like four or five times now. And when when I was just a Laker girl, you know, no one ever thought that I would, except for me, that I'd become <laughs> a, a world class choreographer. But then I didn't tell people I was also recording music, and in case. No, I didn't. If no one knew it, I'd be fine. If it didn't work, but then that happened, and and then to be able to come back on a brand new show that changed, that made the history and changed the face of television is blessing. It really made so many. I mean, not only you guys were super. You were superstars before you started, but then you were super duper really, stars. Really, was Simon Cowell a superstar? Let me think. <laughs> you know what? You're right That's about that. That's what I miss mm, about uh, you guys. Not, uh, Ryan. Mm, Randy, oh. you're right. Yeah. You're right. You arrived you famous. The, you were the only one famous on that <laughs> show. Go figure. You the made woman. them. The woman. You made I them. I made them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still like talk to these guys? Is, did I, you call the, each other up after you found out that I, okay. Idol was going to be over after the next season? You're a father? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I run in LA. I run into Randy, which is wonderful. I, I went to uh, Ryan's 40th birthday party up in Napa. And, and it's wonderful always running into them and, and getting a chance to just reminisce. Which girl? Born and raised in this in the L.A. in the San Fernando Valley. And you started dancing. You were like what a kid? 
Five, six. I, I, I'm considered late in the game. I started taking dance classes when I was seven and a half on the auditions for So You Think You Can Dance. This is the funny, the funniest thing to me, and I say it over and over. When did you start dancing? Oh, I started when I was three, and I go, why so late? <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, it's yeah. I started when I was young, but it was when I was four years old that I watched a movie that changed my life, and that was Singing in the Rain with Gene oh. Kelly. And he's the reason why I said I want to do what he's doing. In fact, I looked at the television set and I said, that's my dad and my father says, no, that could be your TV dad, but I'm your father. <laughs> but it was then, and, and many years later, I wanted, my folks always taught me the, the gift of gratitude and a walk with gratitude. And I already had six singles out. I had made record breaking on my debut albums, Forever Your Girl. But I wanted, there was a song on my album that lent itself to a duet. And it was opposites attract. And I, I knew I, the record companies say, no, you'll be oversaturated in radio, which they did. I said, but I don't want to release a single. I just want to, I want to do a, a video and do, create an animated cat. And I want to get, pay tribute to Gene Kelly. That. And what I did is I did it. The record company then released it as a seventh single. It sold six million albums more for me. But the most important thing was I dedicate it to Gene Kelly. And three days later, he called me and asked me to come over to have tea. <gasps> and from that moment on, it was my most favorite thing to do every single week for the last two and a half years of his uh, life. Really? Wow. Yes, that's the, that's the gift of gratitude that I can, you know, I get to knock on wood and say, it's it's so important. Oh. Well, that's beautiful. Did I hear for a moment you were concerned about oversaturation? Because there was a time. No, my record. Well, yes. You turn on the radio. It was it was you and only you. Right, sorry. But no, it was it was it was wild. Do you remember that? I do. I I'll never forget the first time I heard my song on the radio. It was like one of those double whammies. I was like, <laughs> like that, and I was at a stoplight, and I looked over, and they were they were like singing straight up like full on with their holding their steering wheel and I'm going oh my god and then they looked over at me and they're going oh my god <laughs> it was like one of those moments that yeah it was it was a nice nice run and I fun experience do you think that you'd ever go record another song I am you are right now I am and I'm um, I'm going I'm putting together a musical uh, version of my life story so are you going to take it to New York or? I'm going to be taking it all over. I'm going to start in Southeast Asia. and what, When is that? Yeah, it, it's in the works and it's it's a whole different, you know me, I, I, I kind of break the barriers and do try new creative things and I'm very excited because it's paralleling my life story and an underground world of Scat Cat's life story. Oh, that's wow. awesome. We're so happy that you're back on TV. You. I'm Fantastic. Happy. I love this show and it's it's like a hand glove for me. Would you say hello to Nigel for us? He's one of our favorites there. He's awesome. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun. <laughs> we're having a lot of fun. Paul Abdul, everybody, thank you so much. Thank great you to so see you. Much. All right, great. check so her out. 12th season of So You Think You Can Dance. Good Day New York is coming right back.